Hey y'all, it's Trista. Thanks so much for joining me today and this guy who's decided to sit on my lap. Anyway, I wanted to show you this really fun craft that I cannot take credit for. I did not come up with it, but I did read it in this edition of Mindful Crafting Magazine. And this is printed in the UK, but it's got these cute fabric succulents in there. And so I decided to give it a try won't take credit for coming up with the craft. It was by a person called Sarah Beeman. So you can find all the details on this and a couple of other different succulents that she does in this magazine. Highly recommend. I'll try to put the link in the comments below. Anyway, here is one that I created and here is another that I created. So I think these are super fun. I think you'll like it too. So hang out and let's take a look. If you like this kind of video where we do crafting and sometimes unboxing or shopping, be sure and follow my channel and click like if you like the video and subscribe so you don't miss any new future videos. Thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. So let me show you what you need for this craft. You need some green fabric. You don't need a whole lot, a third of a yard maybe. Just kind of depends on how big your fabric is, but you need some green fabric or whatever color you would like your succulents to be. You're gonna need a styrofoam ball. This one is two inches and I'm using it on this jar. So this is a jar that I treated to make it look like mercury glass. It was just a jar like this to begin with. So you can paint your jar. You're gonna use this for your base. A little jute to go around it once you're done. These are I don't know if you can see those. These are sequin pins, so you're gonna need these. And I just got these at Michael's, so they're easy to find. And it's gonna be way easier to cut your fabric if you've got a fabric cutter and a couple of self-healing mat and a big quilting ruler. If you don't have those, that's okay. The thing is that you're gonna be cutting these in even strips. So however you get that done, totally fine. You can use scissors or you can use this. I just find this faster, so let's get started. This is a little awkward. This is my filming space. So normally I would use a bigger cutting mat and kind of spread out, but just for purposes of this, so it'll fit within my document camera, I'm just gonna do this right here. So this, I left my fabric doubled over. You are going to want to determine your strips based on the size of the ball that you're using. So this is a two inch ball. So you want your strips to be two inches wide and you're actually going to cut them down further to be a two inch square for this ball. So if you were doing a larger one with a five inch ball, then you would want five inch squares. So you're going to do five inch strips and then cut it down into squares that were five inches. So this is, this is what we're going to start with. So that's my two inch square. Now you are going to want to cut 33 of these two inch squares. So my fabric is lined up right here. I'm just going to, for the purpose of the video, we're gonna try and do it this way. Okay, lined up on seven. And we are going to do two inch squares. So two inches is going to be right there. Make sure it's lined up down here. Yep, looks like it is. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my rotary cutter. You wanna make sure that this doesn't slide. So, there we go, that's two inches. Um, I'm gonna need more than just one strip. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another run at this. Put this back up on. And if any of your spots don't cut through all the way, you can go back through with this with some scissors. So, but like I said, I'm just gonna do it this way for purposes of the video. This is not really my ideal way. I would spread out, but it's okay. Okay, so let's see how we're doing with our strips. All right, 
so these are not cut all the way through so I'm gonna I'm gonna do two things here I'll snip these Everybody who's a quilter is watching this and just shuddering with how I'm placing this, but that's okay. I am not a quilter, <laughs> so I'm just going to get it done. And these might not be exactly even. Your, your petals are not going to cover evenly if your squares are not even, so all right. Looks like this is not totally even, so I'm just going to eyeball it and try to make it in the middle. We need 30, 33 strips, so cut that apart. Cut this apart because I cheated a little bit. Alright, so now we're going to cut these into 2 inch strips. So this is going to be a little bit easier. And as you can see, they are not two inches great but that's okay we'll work with it anyway you go all the way through until you have 33 squares I'm sure that I have at least 33 here. You are going to iron these and I'll show you how you're going to iron them. This is a time consuming part of the craft. So you are going to iron it so that the nice side is out. Okay. So you're going to fold it in half, iron it this way, and then you're going to iron it like this. And like this if you can see that so you're going to make a triangle so this is just folded in and folded in so you're going to do this for all 33 and then just press it down solid so you're going to press it down solid so that it wants to stay just like this so just you know hit it with your iron I actually will usually do like two at a time so and try not to burn your fingers but I'll have two of them going side by side with the iron and so I'll press them both like this okay so just do your iron over it press them once um, so that you have little triangles and we'll be right back after I do that okay so now that we've ironed all of our little squares into triangles hold up not all of them let me be very specific you only do 32 of the squares but remember you cut out 33 because this is the one that you're going to start with and you don't want it to have any creases so only 32 squares do you fold up into triangles and iron the 33rd square is the one we're going to start with so here's a thimble you might want to keep one on hand you don't have to have that but sometimes these little pins get a little squirrely trying to go into the ball but basically to get started you take your 33rd square and this is going to be the center of your succulent right so on each corner go ahead and take one of these little pins and just push it into the ball okay and ignore my nails a couple of them came off I was trying that new gel nail polish and Apparently I need a little work on that. So anyway, eight of my nails look really nice. Okay, so again, all four corners. You might want to stretch it just to make sure you're covering it as well as you can. And just push the pins in. And they go in pretty easy, especially in the beginning. Okay, so now that you've got these four in right you've got the top of your succulent 
So now you're going to take one of your triangles and you're going to do these four at a time. So sometimes I just do, I take four out so I can focus on them. Okay, so you're going to line these up so that it covers up those pins and it kind of centers itself on that side. See how that is? You want to make sure that as it kind of pulls away, it's not going to show any of the styrofoam ball. So from here, you need a lot of pins for this. Um, you're going to just fasten the corners down. This is a really simple process. Um, you're going to be doing it over and over. But it's very easy to do for the most part until you get one pin that doesn't really want to go into the styrofoam very well. But you can just push it in. And it's okay if it's not 100% perfect because you're going to have some overlap here. You'll be able to probably cover that up. Okay, so there's one. I always go to the opposite side. So here's my second triangle. I'm just going to line that up right there. Kind of make sure it looks like it's even across there. Scooch it up just a little and then just pin it in. You want to make sure you get all of the pieces of fabric and try not to pin on top of another pin because of course that's going to cause you problems. Then just go across and make sure you get all of the corners pinned down. If it doesn't want to go in right where you start, try moving it over just a smidge and you might find a spot that's a little bit softer to go in. Okay, so there's two. Now I'm going to go on this side and start here. Can you hear my dog snoring? <laughs> she is snoring in every video of mine, I think. Okay. Here we go. All right, so I'm just going to show you at normal speed what these first few look like, and then we're going to speed this up because you're going to end up doing this 32 times. And so you're just going to keep repeating this process all over the styrofoam ball. I can feel a pin underneath there. Okay. All right, so now we've got three. Let me take my fourth. Try to make sure it kind of lines up with that. Okay, we're about done with the first layer. All right, so now you've got the beginning of your succulent. Okay, so what do you do next? I pull four of them out so I know, so I can kind of keep track of where I am, right? Okay, so we've got my next little triangle. So the next one that you're going to place is in between these two. You're just going to kind of layer it just like this. Okay. And it's pretty much even with those. You're just making sure that you've got the gaps covered. You're going to keep going around. Okay. So then I would move over to, well, I always go across ways. I don't think it matters super a lot, but I just like the way it layers on the sides um, when I go across. But
Okay, so after you get your first eight in there, then you're going to take the next four or eight, you can do it however you like, and you're going to start your next row. And you're going to start it to line up with the one that's kind of tucked in the middle. So for this, I'm just going to start it a little bit lower. Just like that. I'm going to hold it with one thumb and start tacking it down this next row. Okay, so now that we have our little succulent, um, as you can see, you could cover the back side of this if you wanted, I don't know what you would put it on, but you don't really need to. I'm going to put it in this little jar that I've made look like mercury glass. And because you can kind of see through it, I like to kind of make it look like it's got rocks inside. And I don't have any rocks right now, so what I'm gonna use is this bucket of beans that I use to like weight flowers and whatnot. So I'm just going to fill this up with some beans. And once it's inside, you can't really tell that they're beans and not rocks. So that's going to kind of give it a little bit of weight. So if I put it on a shelf or whatever, I also am going to tie. I actually think for this one, I'm going to do a little bit of this baker's twine. So before I put the beans in there, dump those back out. I'm going to tie this baker's twine around it. And I'm tying another knot in it. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I'm just gonna tie this like around the top. It's not, I guess it is perfect to do twice. So I'm just gonna tie it like this, put a little knot on it. I love the black and the white and the green. And so that's just got like a nice little, nice little edge finish to it. Now I'm gonna put the beans in it. So got this in the beans. And you don't want to fill it all the way up to the top because your ball is curved and so it's going to sit in here just a little bit. So now I made a number of these and I mailed them and I was concerned with the beans inside that it would all come apart. So when I glued this previously, I used E6000 on here to really give it a strong bond. But I'm keeping this one and I'm just going to keep it around my craft room and whatnot. So I'm just going to use my glue gun. This is my Sure Bonder. Ryobi cordless glue gun. So it's already heated up and all I'm gonna do is just put glue around the edge so it has something to stick to. I can always go back and add more if I need to. This will just give it something to grip onto and I'm gonna, ah, got it on my finger. And I'm just gonna kinda Set that in there to firm up. You can kind of move the leaves around a little bit if you want to just to kind of make it stick a little bit better, but there you go. And it looks like I was a little heavy handed with my glue right here, so I might try and just wipe a little bit of that away. But because it is on glass, it's easy to just pull that off and redo. So there you go. That is a succulent that you don't have to water. And if you can tell, it looks like there's rocks inside. So this is gonna hold pretty well, as you can see. Nothing fell out. And ta-da!